Germany, a land of culture, power, and schnitzel. Since its birth in 1871, Germany has had a giant hand in shaping the history of the world, and cemented itself as one of the strongest and most influential countries in the world, for better or worse. But what some don't know is that Germany wouldn't even exist today if it wasn't for the help of the now six feet underground country of Prussia. It all started back in August of 1806. The sun was chirping and the birds were shining, and the Holy Roman Empire was in pieces. Good job, Francis II. Second, with the Holy Roman Empire in shambles, tiny little baby countries like Brandenburg, Hanover, and Bavaria were left to their own devices to survive. Most of these puny pipsqueak loser countries either tried to continue to exist on their own or were just absorbed into big boy countries like France. But some of these absolutely miniature ant countries decided to instead band together and become slightly less small baby countries called commonwealths, such as the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And then there was the special boy, that was Prussia, who survived on its own and also vored some other countries into its territory. These commonwealths became the best of friends and lived in harmony and peace for the rest of their days. Did I say friends? Sorry, I meant to say sworn enemies who fought over smaller territories to add to their own in an attempt to create a new Germanic empire they could rule. These were called the Austro-Prussian Wars. These wars ended with the Austro-Hungarian Empire getting absolutely destroyed, forcing them to give ownership of a lot of the Germanic territories to Prussia. While at that point, Prussia had control of most of the Germanic territories. France still had control over a few. You know what that means, it's time for war. More specifically, it's time to fake a note saying that the French ambassador insulted the Prussian king to use as an excuse for Prussia to go to war with France. Dear Prussian King, you are big dummy. I do not like you and think you are stupid. Eat my shorts, nerd. Sincerely, the French ambassador. Here is a reenactment of the Prussian and French war now. With their loss to Prussia, France gave the territories it had previously absorbed into its own land to Prussia. This victory against France also made Prussia look pretty dang cool and made all the previously independent Germanic countries join Prussia. With all these countries now united, Prussia finally created the German Empire on January 21st, 1871. And this German Empire created and kept a very strong unified government all the way until their next war, which happened to be World War I. World War I is basically high school drama on a much bigger scale, with slightly more deaths. After fighting in, and losing, multiple territorial wars, the Austro-Hungarian Empire's pride was damaged, and they took what small amount of remaining territories and tightened their grip on them. They formed an alliance with Russia, so they can be a little less scared of Russia, and hope to get some of the territories they lost back. All of this high school level clique forming caused a lot of tension in all of Europe, leading up to the war. With the First World War starting, Prussia and Germany were basically the same thing, and everyone just called them Germany. But right up to the war, it had a Prussian leader, Wilhelm Kaiser II, who before the war had his mental state and entire reputation destroyed by rumors. When the War of Worlds Part 1 finally started, Wilhelm's generals, Paul von Hindenburg and Erich Landenworth, forced him to enter the war and then pretty much took control of all of Germany, changing it into military dictatorship. Kaiser was not very fond of this development, understandably, and said to them, you will regret this, gentlemen. They did not. This caused Prussia to lose its prominence in Germany, thus marking the start of its decline. During this war, France and Russia fought against the German, Prussian, and Austrian forces on the Eastern Front. The Germans were able to beat the Russians on this front, but this took away attention from the French, who used this opportunity to attack on the Western Front. In the final parts of war, 1918 to be exact, Russia gave up some of its territories to Prussia, including Estonia, Latvia, and pieces of Poland to Germany in part of the Treaty of Brest-Livogsk. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you say it. <laughs> My pronunciation may be off there. Once the war was finally over, Basically, everyone blamed Prussia's military ideals for the war, and Germany was forced to pay for the war costs. And then in 1918, Hugo Pruss, 
tried to abolish Prussia in order to provide support for Germany, but ended up doing the opposite of that, which is not abolishing Prussia. Good job, Hugo, you ding-dong. At this point, Prussia decided to make like a human parent and give up everything it had to help its ungrateful child. Prussia provided economic support to the rest of Germany, even giving up a large chunk of its territory they owned but lost much of its power as a singularity in the process, giving up its status as a kingdom and individual power in Germany. And now it's time for World War Dos. That's Spanish for two, by the way. In 1933, bad painter and professional garbage boy Hitler abolished the German states, making them all into one singular country. Welcome to the world, the Germany we know and love. Fun fact about old Adolf, he was a huge fan of old Prussian leaders and used several of their military tactics in the war. He also used the Prussian symbol of the Teutonic Cross in the military propaganda. Hitler's use of their military tactics and symbols combined with everyone's hatred for Prussia caused the blame for this war to again be placed on Prussia. In an article written by an Australian author named E.P. Raymond, he said, What we have to smash today is the Prussian spirit. This ought to be the only war aim, which reflected many countries' feelings towards poor old Prussia. So the Allies abolished the state once and for all on February 25th, 1947. After the end of World War II, the Soviet leader, Stalin, decided to bring the northern part of East Prussia into the great motherland of the Soviet Union. When Germany was partitioned, the Soviet Union took most of what had been East Prussia, which became East Germany, or the German Democratic Republic. This was the last nail in the metaphorical coffin for Prussian nationalism. Rest in peace, Prussia. You will be missed. Even though you kind of sort of cost Hitler. In the arms of the angel, fly away from here. From this dark world to it, and the endlessness that you With the first war... Heck. <laughs> We're gonna have to wait for that. <laughs> Freaking heck.